Bruce Bowman from the Farmington Hills Historic District Commission and I'm here in the Warner Barn on the Warner Mansion grounds which was built in 1867 two years after the Civil War. At the time P. Dean Warner was the state senator. He also had a st store, the main store in downtown Farmington and he also had a farm because one didn't get elected to office unless one had a farm in those days. You had to present yourself as a farmer. The uh, house has been preserved and is now a museum and uh, it's a house museum and the uh, people that re were volunteers at the house found they didn't have any place when they had children coming in to um, entertain, uh, to sit down because you don't want them sitting on the antique furniture. So they reconditioned the barn so that it is also used as a classroom. I'm here with Sharon Burdett and Keith Groughton, who are volunteers at the mansion. Sharon, can you tell me how the barn was used originally and how it evolved into this classroom? Well, since it was built so such a long time ago, Ruth, um, 1867, obviously they would not have had any cars at that time, so they would have had to house your horses and your wagons, carriages, and that sort of thing. And also, we can see a, a place where there's a, a little upstairs, well, there's a large upstairs, but there's a section that's a little bit lower down where they probably would have kept the straw for the horses, the hay for them to eat, straw to be bedded down in. And so as it evolved over time, of course, then the Warners, when cars were invented and came to this part of the, the country, they immediately, of course, being a wealthy family, bought a car. And Fred, the, former, the governor to be, did not like horses, as we know. And um, so they probably were one of the first families to buy a car. And also, we know that bicycles were invented about that time in the late 1800s. And he loved the, di the bicycles. So he probably kept his bicycle out here also. Kids from the neighborhood probably played in the barn, played up in the straw. And they could go up in the second story, and they could look out all over Farmington. So it was a nice high place, and so you can imagine children playing there. So it's, I think, kind of as nice now that the barn is in three sections, and um, we use it probably a little bit like they do because we have children here that will come for different activities, and uh, especially we have school groups that come in the spring, and um, so we bring them in here and we set them on benches like children might have sat in the 1800s in a rural school, just on hard benches. And uh, then we show them artifacts and ask them what they think the artifact might have been used for. You can see some of the artifacts actually on the walls of the, the carriage house still. Rakes and, and a cedar uh, machine used to put seeds into the little holes for sowing for, for crops. And um, so they, they get a little bit of, when they come for a tour to the mansion, they, they go do a little bit in the house and they see how people lived a hundred some years ago. And then they come out here, and then they see some of the uh, utensils and some of the equipment that people used to, to make their life complete in the 1800s. And then uh, frequently part of their tour is that they go to one of the cemeteries and kind of see where some of our, our first citizens are now buried. So we use it for uh, school groups, and then also when we have activities, um, and we meet out here. Then in the other sections, we have storage. We have storage like the Warners would have had, like if they were if they had outdoor furniture, then uh, they had to store it in the winter. So we do that also. So the, the nice benches that we have, the park benches, on the grounds in the summer are stored there for the winter. And then we also have our own things for the um, mansion, the people to use, signs and equipment. And so we store those things. But we also have um, a couple of pieces of, the, of uh, history that will not fit into the mansion, and one is the loom back here, which someday we would like to have operating again. And so that's here. And then we have a printing, an old printing press in another section of the carriage house. And so when the barn is all open for visitors, then people can see the old printing press and they can see the loom as well. It's continuously doing things, and you're continuously uh, changing the uh exhibits too, which makes it fun. We try to keep it fresh and something a little bit new for people when they come, so it's not always the same old, same old. Some of the things are 
the traditional things that we keep from year to year, and then certain things do change, different just exhibits so that people can see new things, new quilts, new clothing, new displays. We had a very nice display last uh, season of antique perfume bottles that one of the docents um, owns. And you have di when you have different docents, it won't be the same program twice. Exactly, exactly, because everybody learns a little bit different facts about the, the mansion, and so yeah, you could come back many, many times and get more, more information. Different stories. Exactly. Now, well, we're sitting here where they would have kept the horses, aren't we? The horses we? would have been right here, where they had their own, mm -hmm. I guess their own windows to look out of. And mm -hmm. well, they could have had five of them, it looks like. It's possible, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The governor hated horses, so. Yeah. It was his, it was his you know, transportation. He had a, well, he went for bicycles as soon as they he were. He was a bicyclist. Yes, he was. Definitely. Bicycles. The big bicycles. And he liked the cars. Yes. And uh, yep. now you would have had the horses here. I wonder where the carriages were. If they had a special carriage house, or it was here. I believe the carriages, the carriages were kept behind this wall here to the east, on the east side of the building, just because of how it's set up. And um, the sliding doors and just the way things are set up. A lot, of, a lot of things have been covered, and you know, cosmetically, you can't really see what's behind them. Well, but I believe they were put on this east side because of. Apparently the Warner carriage was well recognized. I guess there was some little girl from a very poor family that one of the children brought home and she was crying because they were picking on her. So Mrs. Warner said, we'll saddle up the horses and take you around to the Warner carriage and they will not tease you anymore. Uh, <laughs> good story. Yeah, well, Keith sure has is. done a lot of work to um, maintain this building because uh, it's you know like anything that's a hundred over a hundred years old, hundred and fifty, uh, they they start to need work, and so the, he's a builder and he's on the historical commission, so he has the love of old buildings and the and the knowledge to repair them. So he's like very proud of the work. I think we are mm -hmm. especially yeah, that, a, that he's done. Enjoy on the working here. Very nice place to work. It. What uh, is here on the grounds? Of course, the, the house itself, which is the main attraction. And uh, tell us uh, what is what is here and how is it used? The Governor Warner Mansion, um, as Ruth said before, was built in 1867. Mm -hmm. And it's been the largest house in Farmington since that time, Farmington City. And it became famous because the people that owned it were some of the leaders from early Farmington days, and obviously they did very well and they, were, and they prospered. They um, were very um, part, much part of the government of Michigan and of the uh, government of Farmington. They served many offices, and uh, the owner of the house, the builder of the house, was the first one to serve in all those offices, and then his son Fred also served in those offices, and then finally he became the governor of Michigan, 1905 to 1911. He was the youngest three-time elected governor, and uh, he was a progressive Republican. The Republican Party was very new at that time, and uh, he did many things to try and help people. He was a very kind man, and his family lived in the house until 1980 when the house was given to the city of Farmington. And so 113 years worth of, of Warner family members lived in the house, and now it belongs to the city of Farmington. And it includes this beautiful Victorian Italianate structure and the carriage house and the gazebo, which was built not by them, but by the city of Farmington. It's uh, a wonderful um, house museum, so people can see how people lived between 1880 until about 1920. And uh, people come here to just walk around and enjoy the beautiful yard and the beautiful gardens, trees, many of which were planted by the gardeners. And uh, the fountain we have out in the back is very peaceful. There are statues of the governor's wife. And so a lot of people come just to, to walk around and relax and enjoy the scenery. They just, sometimes people will just sit on the, in, the couch, in the chairs on the porch of the mansion and just observe life going by on Grand River, just like the governor and his family did. And uh, sometimes people come for different reasons. They come because they want to tour the house or they attend an event here, 
or they want to get married here. So they come for many, many reasons, and um, we hope that it stays that way for a long time. Well, the gardens, of course, are attractive to people. The gardens, yes. We, we, we need to not forget the gardens. They are beautiful, and they are, again, the gardens are run and taken care of by a group of dedicated volunteers, the Warner Mansion Gardeners. And they come every Wednesday morning, and they're on their own time, and they plant those flowers. They tend the flowers all summer, and they just... They just care for them. Some of the ladies and, and gentlemen no longer have their own houses, but they live in apartments, and so they really enjoy coming back and making new friends and then digging up the dirt for the Governor Warner Mansion. How can people find out more about the Warner Mansion? Well, one way is to go to the library because we have, uh, in our Farmington libraries, we have lots of books written about the city of, of Farmington and the people that lived here. But also, if you would like to come and visit the mansion and the carriage house, you can look at the City of Farmington's website, and they will give you the hours. And uh, if somebody has a special interest in a certain part of the uh, mansion and, and the grounds, the carriage house and the grounds, then uh, special tours can be set up also at any time through the City of Farmington website. That's even in the in the winter when it's supposedly closed. Up. Right. If somebody has a special need, just wants to do a special tour, then as long as a docent is available, because we are all volunteers that run the mansion and um, help take care of the, the carriage house, and then we can set it up for people. Now we can go take a look at the outside of the building and see what, it, what it's like, which is very unique. Let's go over and take a look at the Rose Garden. You know, the fence is, was originally around a, a cemetery. An antique cemetery. Yeah, this fence came off of the cemetery at 12 Mile and Halstead. Yes, and they had to replace it. Yes. Yep. And what they did is they put in a, the wrong kind of fence, and the Historic District Commission made them put in the proper fence. Change it around, yes. So then the mansion got the fence. The mansion got the fence. Uh, the Rose Garden is still there, and it's well tended, and it's a very beautiful garden. The little windows over there are significant. Yes. What are they? Those were horse uh, for each one for a little horse to be there. The horse viewers, yeah, they had the horses in that room. They could have had for five ventilation horses. and uh, just for for lighting, just for daylighting to come in. They could have had five horses there. Probably. They, they could have probably yeah. had that many because needed the windows open. Because the upstairs has got it's where all the hay was. Story a lot of area up there for probably Especially five horses. Back spot, it's a nice, you know, nice little spot for the hay. Yeah. You can see where they would pull the hay in with the door. That's typical of barns. The one in the front, yeah, one in the front also on the north side. There's the same thing. Because yeah. even doing work up there, I saw a lot of uh, a lot of hay straw still oh my. between the boards, between the floors. Yeah, you tear the timbers out. You see a lot of. I love that when things are left from the yeah, past. Yeah, very dusty and very mm -hmm. very strawy. Yeah. Kind of cool. It's you can see the foundation is the random uh, rock foundation there. Yes. Let's go take a look over here. Okay. Those are the barn doors. I guess it's what barn doors look like. Yes, they are. And, uh, and there's one up above for loading. You can see the original glass stuff. of the window up there with the wavy glass in it from the second story. We have several panes that are original glass. And, oh, I so. see there's another place that they could bring hay. Yes, yeah. that's another access there for... You said this is an addition, the shed? This is an addition here, yes, that was uh, used for... It could have been for another, an optional possible cart, pony cart, or mm -hmm. in storage. It had an all dirt floor in here originally. Maybe Fred brought his Until bicycle over here. He Probably may have. It was just extra here. storage because this was not the original part when this barn was built. It was added on, and I'm not really sure what year it was put on, but. And I'm sure there's it probably was the kids looked out that window, and they could look all around Farmington. Mm -hmm. There's been lots of fun to play in a barn. Oh, I bet it was. They also like to play up in the uh, uh, Belvedere, Belvedere on the oh, roof. Oh, you can see oh, everything in the Belvedere. Yeah, yeah it's a lot higher. Well, thank you so much for sharing the things you're doing and the wonderful 
opportunities people have to come and have something special to do, either a wedding or whatever is going to be sure. brought here. It was a pleasure to be with you today, Ruth. Thank you for coming in and interviewing us. And we love the Governor Warner Mansion, and I enjoy promoting it in the community. Well, thank you.